Minnesota basketball fans, welcome back to the Living in Loserville podcast, Timberwolves and Gophers edition. And we probably should just go with the Gophers edition because the Timberwolves are an embarrassing they're they're just embarrassing. It's it, it's 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 a bad bad one. But we're gonna talk Timberwolves, but we're gonna go Gophers first. I still can't believe they lost that game. And I'm not talking about the Gophers. They fought hard on the road. We'll start with that game just like we did last Thursday. Um, as far as post game here in Illinois, unfortunately the Gophers dropped one on the road. Um. It was a close one, though. I liked how they kept battling back. It just seemed like Illinois had the answer every time we would cut the lead. But welcome back, like I said, to the Living in Loserville podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carlson. My co-host, Aaron Miller, will be joining us very, very shortly. So, yeah, we're going to start this puppy off, uh, this this Minnesota basketball podcast, with the Gophers. Because why do we want to talk about the Timberwolves? No, we will. We will. we got to... Uh, cover that debacle, if you can call it a debacle. That's putting it lightly. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk about the uh, what's up with the damn Timberwolves, right, in general. It's a rough one. And, and, and you know, talking about the Gophers as well, or tour the last, uh, last two games has been looking for some help. We talked about, you know, the bench and how we have some issues with depth there. An injury tonight didn't help that out. But we're going to talk about a variety of stuff here on the Living in Loserville podcast. And if this is your first time listening to it, you can find it right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope it over radio. It streams live at archives right here, but you don't have to just listen to it on blog talk. Of course, we're you know available all across the board. You just find this show, Living in Loserville, under the Rope It Over Radio podcast on Apple Podcast. Um, iHeartRadio, Player FM, TuneIn, Spricker, Stitcher. We're also part of the Grueling Truth Sports Podcast Network, which can be found all across the board, including Spotify and TuneIn. In fact, if you use your Siri or Alexa through that Spotify or TuneIn, you can find both platforms. Why don't you head on over to the GruelingTruth.com? They changed it. It's not net anymore, although it'll still link you to it. The GruelingTruth.com. They got a great sponsor over there, BetNow.eu, with the promo code TGT. The GruelingTruth.com. It's basketball, football, boxing, baseball, everything in between. And one thing, real quick, if you're thinking about cutting the cord, or maybe you cut the cord and you're just not happy, you need something. I got something for you here. It's called AT&T TV Now, and that's not to be mistaken with AT&T TV. I know I've had a little issue with that. But the AT&T TV now is the uh, streaming service. It's not the normal cable thing. It's available everywhere. Um, Seven-day free trial is there, so you don't have to uh, get tied in down to any kind of uh, annual contract. The plans uh, start as low as $60 a month. It includes uh, HBO. You can uh, stream it anywhere. They have the cloud DVR as well. That's AT&T TV now streaming live cable. Okay. So we will be getting to that Timberwolves stuff, but we're fresh off a Gopher game. The Gophers fall um, in a tight game on the road at a ranked Illinois. Um, not the biggest shocker there. Um, Illinois did kind of start out slow, one of nine from the field. You could tell um, the intensity from the Gophers defense really showed up early. I think it was like six to three early, like six minutes into the game. Very low scoring game, but then the Gophers went cold as well, horribly cold. Four of 18, uh, all the way up to the first 10 minutes. Um, and also featured 12 straight misses. And we talked about this last week. Oturo is playing great, right? No doubt about it. Oturo is playing great. And he, I'd say he did okay in the first half, kind of got bullied by the big dude. Once big dude got hurt, or not hurt, got in foul problems, which hurt their team, um, then he went off. And that's where he made most of his hay. But you're looking at him early, and he's three of four. The rest of the squad is one of 16. We saw that. At Michigan State at home, we'll talk barely about that game, but we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Then back-to-back threes, um, got it to like 17-11, 
with seven minutes left in the first half, and uh, they just started playing really well offensively and defensively, especially defensive Illinois did. Uh, Carr had some fall problems, had two fall two falls in, in the first six minutes. And when you look at minutes, we talked about depth, too, and we're going to bring in Aaron here in just a moment. We talked about depth, and, and we're, we're missing a you know a starter this game and, and whatnot. And, but three out of the – they put up a stat during the broadcast. Three out of our five starters are in the top five of Big Ten minutes. We're definitely going to need Carr – down the stretch, so hopefully that point guard that came in can give them some band-aid minutes, three minutes here, two minutes there, that type of thing. Um, but it was just – it was rough. Uh, you know, they, there's like a 12-minute stretch again where they just couldn't do anything. Finally, um, Oturo got an end one. That kind of stopped, you know, it from there. But they were one of eight from three. Overall, neither squad did much from three. Um, but you know, that, uh, that Colburn, he was, he had about 40 or 50 pounds on our guy and, and you could see it, you could see it. Um, and I also noticed that the Gophers missed a few bunnies, um, close to the rim that we sure would have liked to have, uh, back, no doubt about it. Just in this first half of play, Aaron, um, what are your thoughts? Although it was fairly close, um, we just were having problems uh, scoring the basketball. Everyone besides a guy named Arturo from uh, Creighton Durham Hall. You just needed someone else, I think. You know, a poor shooting night all around, except for Arturo, and maybe he could have done a little better. Like you said, missed a couple bunnies. And you can't have them. You end up losing by nine. In a contribution from anybody else really would have made the difference. Kelcher didn't shoot the ball really well. Carr you know, was in the lane and out of the lane, looked to pass a lot. It wasn't really uh, hitting shots. So I think it's just a cold night on the road except for one player. Now, you mentioned uh, the big guy from uh, Illinois getting in some foul trouble. I would suspect that that was part of the game plan. So that worked out. And Obviously, you played defensively pretty well just to give up 59 points. And, of course, Illinois didn't shoot as well as they probably would have liked to. So just kind of a, a late January, Big Ten, grinded out road affair. Uh, we ended up on the wrong end of it. But that first half, you know, there was hope there because, you know, it kept it close and kept coming back or, or the lead kind of fluctuated from time to time. But you just needed another uh, player or two. But, you know, just that extra little bit, another player, maybe a bench player, maybe one of the starters come up and contribute a little bit more than they did would have been a much closer game and what was already a very close game. Right, so it's 24-20 to 20 at half. Um, I talked about a couple of those bunnies right at the rim that they missed. And then you add up 8-0 and o on fast break points. That's a lead right there. Now, they did kind of have the, the Gophers had a decent start. Um, er, very early in the second half, but that didn't last long. Illinois got hot. I think they hit six or seven field goals, got up 36 to 26. Um, and you're talking like five, six minutes in there. And, um, so you're like, okay, well, uh, this could get ugly, but unfortunately for Illinois, and, you know, it was nice at the time for the Gophers, that big man and, and the point guard, Frazier, both had, uh, three falls apiece. We're talking about the, uh, right around 14 minutes left in the game. Now, Carr also got that extra third fall, or that extra fall to make it three with 13.55 left. So that was a whole lot of, you know, issue there. However, what's that backup's name? We haven't seen much of him, the point guard. Um, uh, Trey? You talking about Trey Williams? No, or the He's point kind guard. of an off guard. We yeah, came off the bench today. Um, was it's... it? Oh, Greenlee. Greenlee, he played uh, some Band-Aid minutes, um, but we went on a run. We didn't really have Carr on the bench that long, but they went on a nice little 7-0 run, cut it to 41-35. to Um, Carr started dishing and scoring a little bit, and then he picked up his fourth one. And I got to admit, it was a questionable call. There was a variety of questionable calls down the stretch, maybe about two or three. I'm not trying to say – there was eight or ten, um, but it got to the point where it's forty-two to thirty-eight. Ten minutes left. 
Um, and Culture finally hit a three, but he was struggling one of eight. It's not like they, the Gophers had a ton of turnovers, um, but they were timely turnovers. That hurt them a whole lot, and it seems like every time we cut it to two or four or whatever, Illinois would come back, and it usually was like a quick bucket at the rim. Um, so, so it was about three minutes left. It's 50 to 45 after a, a little 5 run by the Gophers. Like I mentioned, Kelsher finally hits it. The three and he, and he also got a bucket. That's what got him to where he was. Fifty to forty-seven, two forty-one um, remaining. Demmer had a nice little game in the second half. Eight points gave us a little spark, and then two great moves: one off the dribble and one kind of down in the post by Aturo. Fifty-two to fifty-one, buck forty-three left. There was a questionable call on Demmer on that on that charge where he kind of. Did he pull out the – well, it wasn't. It was a blocking. We thought it was a charge. He pulled out the chair just like they were talking about the broadcast, like uh, Patino told him to. And somehow that was a that was a foul. I didn't really see too much contact there. Maybe they say, like, the feet got tangled up. But to me, that was more of a accidental feet got tangled up. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but they just couldn't quite – uh, get it down, down the stretch. Three of 19 from outside. Like I said, Illinois didn't do much better. They didn't fare much better at all. But um, both bigs, they had the big pig, right, and, and Colburn or whatever the hell his name is. And then and do they pronounce his name differently just because of how it's spelt? Is that what's going on? Because it's spelt Cockburn. I'm just saying. And you don't want that. You don't want that combo um, together. But it, I kept saying, hey, what are they – how would they – is it Colburn? Is it Colburn? Like, what are we – why are we pronouncing his name that way? But I guess it's French or something. But either way, um, that dude and the other dude, I think he looked like an Eastern European, no, no offense. But a lot of these Euros come over, and they're great players. And they're hitting the college ranks more than they used to. But he hit a couple of free throws – so the big man hit a couple of free throws, and that pretty much did us in. Uh, yeah, sorry, man. I thought I, I thought I'd taken mute off. Uh, yeah, you know, you go with. Uh, I think that you're right about his name. I think it might be like English. Sometimes uh, a name like Cockburn in English would be pronounced Coburn. I, I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure that. There's a lot of English words like that. I can't think. None of them come to mind, but I know that there are. So I think they pronounce it Coburn. And, you know, to be honest, if that was my last name, I would like to be called Coburn as well. So uh, I think that <laughs> I would have already had it changed, you know, legally. <laughs> yeah. Can we just take the CK out of that and just call it Coburn? But nonetheless, yeah, he's a big dude. And, you know, Otour is going to have to put some muscle on, I think, if he's going to go to the league or – or, but I thought he held his own. I mean, he was the one golfer that really that really shined. And, and I'd like to kind of maybe get into a little bit of what's, what's going on with Kelsher. The coach is saying that he wants him to drive, but maybe that's just not Gabe's thing. Or, you know, I just really think he found a cold shooting night on the road for him. And I think this you know, the Big Ten road thing is really a uh, you know a real thing because. He, you know, it's not just happening to the Gophers, with the exception of like the really elite of the league, that being like Michigan State, and and I don't really know who else is up there in the top, but you know, the Michigan State seems to win on the road. Uh, they seem to be the only ones really doing it. So, I mean, besides a spot win and a spot win there, but you know, you just can't couch it as to no one can win on the road because you got to find a way to do it. I just think Illinois is a much improved team, and they put together some good players and, and matched up well. At, he would have liked to shoot the ball better. I mean, I don't want to, to hit the nail on the head more than that. But, I mean, that was really it. I didn't see any lack of effort. I didn't see any, uh, you know, the officials, you're right. There were some there were some calls that were a little bit questionable. But, you know, that's home cooking in a way. And so, you know, I just feel like it was what it was, just a road loss to a, to a good Illinois team. And, you know, it's, on Kelsher, it's just, I'm wondering if he shouldn't be trying to drive, and maybe he's just a pop guy out in, on, out in the threes. Maybe that's what he does. And, I mean, you can make that work, but it, like we said last week, we'd like to see that three kind of uh, starter thing going with him and, and the point guard and Oturu. That would really be a nice combination if they can get that going. And it seems like they get it going at home 
they need to kind of get it going on the road. And if you shut down the, the pick and roll inside, Kelcher's got to hit those shots home or away and, and vice versa. If you shut down Kelcher home or away, you've got to have the two man game inside. And it just seemed like that wasn't all working on all cylinders tonight and ended with a, you know, a, not a disappointing loss because, because like you said, uh, it was sort of expected. It would have been nice to maybe pull that win off, but, you know, you kind of figure you're going to go on the road, play a tough team, and uh, it kind of worked out the way you and I uh, had it thought it would. Right, and uh, that that Minnesota game, or Michigan State-Minnesota game at home, by the way, Willie Burton, the third uh, most points in the, the school history, got his uh, jersey hung up, so that was pretty good. Good old Willie Burton. Uh, from the late eighties. Um, you know, that there was no surprise that that was going to be a defensive struggle, especially at the start. Um, and it was just like a couple of big runs. There was a 16 to two run in there, um, from Michigan state. And, and, you know, we just didn't, we had some energy off the bench in, in moments. It was only 30 to 22 at half. Um, but it just, I don't know. Ochoa got his fourth foul with like 10 minutes left. They were down 13. Not much else you can say about that one. Um, they, they just, they just got beat, um, by a better squad. No doubt about it. As far as Kelsher, you know, he, I think he showed last year that he could score in a variety of ways. He's not just an outside shooter. I mean, especially down the stretch last year, he, he you know, he was up there as far as leading the team or with uh, him and Amir Coffee. So, as far as scoring. So I think he can too. It just for whatever reason, the guy shot what 40, 41% from the three last year. And he's right around 32. I'm sure it's worse now. So he's just got to find his groove. Um, maybe, I don't know. I know he had the ball a little bit more last year. Sure. Definitely. Now that we have a point guard and, and he is just trying to find his spot, but we need him to knock these down. We talked about it before we got on that. He's our shooter, you know. What I mean? He's our guy, and, and um, we definitely need him to knock it down, no doubt about it. And when you look at, um, you know, where they stand, this Illinois team, Michigan State, they're both eight and two on top. A lot of teams, three teams with three losses: Rutgers, Maryland, and Iowa, all kind of jumbled up there. It still goes down to the seventh spot, only three games out of the first place. We're only three and a half actually out now that I look at it based off games because we have an extra game right now, but they're five and six. The Gophers are right now. And not a big shock. We said, hey, if we can get to five and five, let's go from there. Wisconsin just left or just lost their second leading scorer and a top player. He's off the team now. He, he chose to leave. Or So hopefully we can get one from them. We got a home and away from them. But if you look at our next five games, these are going to be crucial. We got Wisconsin at home. I think you need that because it's a home game and we need a win. We can't go three in a row. At Penn State, it's going to be tough. Another home game, but it's against Iowa. going to be tough. Then, Indiana and Northwestern, those are almost must-win games. I mean, they are, not must. They are. At Northwestern, it's not as hard as it used to be, especially this year. So, these next five games, Wisconsin, Penn State, Iowa, Indiana, and Northwestern, three and two needs to happen. Because then we'll be back to 500, and then we'll have the little stretch run left of the season. So um, it's there to be had. We still got that potential to be nine and nine or ten and ten, I should say, in the uh, in the conference and get in. We're right on the bubble. Like it, there's a couple of bracketology guys now. The Fox said we're off the bubble. We probably are off the bubble now. You know, or we're. We're first four out, I should say. We're, we're right on that bubble. But the bracketology before this game on ESPN, the guy that really kind of sets the standard for it and has the track record, um, Lagardi, I think his name is, he had us in as an 11 seed. You know what I mean? So we're still right there, and we still have plenty of games. I just mentioned a couple of them, ranked teams, and we know we still could win a game and then get a chance to go against another ranked team when that Big Ten uh, tourney comes around. But three and two at the bare minimum, Aaron Hart, in these next five games. 
Agreed. And, you know, a little talker, Chris, you brought it up a little bit early, like to kind of maybe go into it. Just the lack of bench on this team. And, you know, you got a, a, a upperclassman like Michael Hurt, and he doesn't contribute as much as you think that he would. Jarvis O'Mersa uh, has a lot of energy, uh, but not really in a second season here, not really – uh, maybe uh, as productive as we thought he would in the overall uh, scheme of things. And then you're really young after that. And you got to think that maybe Patino's just holding guys back uh, because of the youth there. But you think you'd get more from Hurt and Omersa. Uh, but that's a big thing. And like, like you said about the minutes played by the starters, it's really starting to get up there. Uh, and I just kind of want to pick your thoughts. I mean, am, am I thinking the right way on that? Just kind of the – the youth, and then, you know, hoping to get more from Hurt and Omersa, or, or, or is I missing something there? No, I, I think you're right there. I just think maybe some of these guys he sees in practice, he's like, there's no way we're putting him in a Big Ten game. Um, we did get a little bit more out of uh, the youngster, um, the true freshman, long, lanky, skinny dude. I can't remember his name now all of a sudden. It's it just – Escape me. I'm going to look it up real quick. It's a, God, what the hell? It's like, it starts with an I. Uh, e, Eham or whatever the hell his name is. Um, Enid. Yeah, 35, yeah. Enid. Now, he was one of five. He started out pretty well, Enid, but he gave a couple of, you know, a couple of good minutes here and there, too. But you're right, hurt. You know, you're a senior, dude. Like, hit some threes, get some loose balls, do something off the bench. Um, yeah, no, is an energy guy, but it's really just a Band-Aid energy guy. A couple of minutes there, he gets a couple of rebounds. He's a cheerleader on the sidelines. I do think his junior and senior year, I think we're going to see more out of him. Uh, we're going to need to. But, um, yeah, I think it's just youth and not getting anything out of hurt. I mean, really, these last two years, we got more out of him his first couple of years. We sure could use just 10, 12 minutes tops out of them yeah that's a good point though this depth is uh really catching up no doubt about it yeah and then Trey you know like he had to fill in to start tonight uh because the other kid was hurt but you know he's also a bench piece that I think needs to kind of build now he's a true freshman and you know I guess we just need to see a little bit more from the youth but we're seeing kind of what this club is and we've got you know five solid starters uh, four and a half maybe and, and, and we're going to try to push through with those and try to get what we can from the bench. Um, but you're right about the next five games. I mean, you got to come out three and two. You've got, I'm not going to call it a soft five game schedule here, but it's a favorable one, I guess is a good way to put it. And you get, you know, got to get that Northwestern, you, you know, a tough game with Penn State, but you got to get them. Maybe you can steal this Wisconsin one and maybe, you know, the best case scenario, you get four and one and gives you a leg up for the last stretch because, you know, you really got to make hay here uh, soon, and uh, this stretch is, is just prime for it. So you just really got to take advantage of the opportunities that are uh, coming your way. Yeah, you're right. Got to take advantage of it. They got to re, you know, re, refocus. They got to they gotta just stay. That's what you got to do. You got to stay calibrated, I guess. Okay, yeah, you lost one. You're going to, you know, you're going to fly home tonight or take a bus home, fly home, whatever it is. And then you just got to get out of your mind and go get the W the next time. Big win over Wisconsin would definitely respark them. And, and yeah, I think three to three and two, they'll be in great shape. Two and three, then you're like, okay, this is we're we're gonna have to upset someone that we don't normally uh, necessarily have a chance to beat per se. Um, that's it for the Gophers. Um, still well within the NCAA tournament. Um, but yeah, that three and two, if they start to go one and four or two and three, we can start to talk a little bit about that three letter word NIT. So anyway, um, before we get into an embarrassing display of, can you call it basketball? I don't know. But, um, before we get into that, obviously this week, basketball wise, um, you know, a legend of the sport, one of the better players. No matter where you rank them, uh, we're not going to sit here and talk about that. But Kobe Bryant, his daughter, 13-year-old daughter, um, seven other folks, uh, I think it was another coach, and, and their daughter, which was friends, they were going to uh, you know, the Mamba Academy, went down in the helicopter, just a tragic event. And you could really 
you can really see how much a guy like that meant to the game um, just from, you know, what we've seen lately. I did like how the Wolves um, at the beginning, oh, I liked how all the NBA teams ran off 24 seconds, and some people did an eight-second thing too. But I liked how the Wolves on the home court put the ball at the start. Wiggins put the ball right um, where Kobe passed, was it MJ? Uh, for points, right there where he took the shot. That was pretty freaking cool. But as far as Kobe Bryant goes, as a Timberwolves fan, obviously you weren't big fans of the Lakers, you know, in the early 2000s. When we started, KG started, you know, really getting it together. I remember uh, before that, you know, conference final run, that year where uh, <laughs> the Timberwolves finally got a four seed. We finally got some home court advantage. Now, who, who do we got? Did, did, did we find out who we got yet? Oh, it's the Lakers. That's right, because Shaq was hurt that year, so their record wasn't a good or as good as it would be, and we got them back in just in time for the playoffs. And then, you know, obviously the, the year they beat us without Cassell, you know, and so we didn't like the Lakers. We didn't like Kobe. We didn't like Shaq. He can respect people, but we didn't like him. Let's be honest about it. But once KG got shipped out of town, I still went for the Celtics against the Lakers in that one series, so two series, actually, sure. But once that happened in our, in our Timberwolves, the home club, didn't have a shot at anything. We've been in that stage since then, basically, besides one year with Jimmy. But, um, by the way, that Jimmy, without Jimmy's looking pretty fun now, isn't it, guys? Anyway, let's get back to this, though. Um you know, Kobe, man, it, it was just, it was shocking. And it just really, you know, it, it just kind of makes you sit back and go, I mean, appreciate the guy for what he did and whatnot, but also just as far as taking advantage of minor stuff, major stuff, thing, it just makes you think how quickly life can be taken away from you. And another thing, you know, it hit me. More and more as I found out, you know, and, and found out more, and then you find out his daughter was with him. You find out all the other people on the, you know, helicopter were gone. And it just hit me in, in a wide variety of ways. It hit home in, in, a, in, in some ways, too. But I also, I thought about it, and gosh, if that was KG, I definitely would have been shedding a tear that day. I mean, not to say that, I, oh, I didn't shed a tear over Kobe. It's not like that. Just I've seen pretty much all, almost every game of KG. Even when he went to the Celtics, I watched a lot of their games. So, um, you know, rest in peace to Kobe, man. That was a, that was a shocker, man. Yeah, not a lot to add to, add to that, man. I thought you said that pretty well. I mean, to me, my thoughts on Kobe were, he's kind of like analogous to my thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. Like I, you love to hate him, and you hate him not because of the person they are. It's just they're so good, and they're just constantly, you know, beating up on the team that you like or, or you know, you can't get past them in the playoffs or, you know, that kind of thing, just, you know, the rivalry type of thing. But, I mean, there's no – no one can argue the fact of, of how good Kobe was at playing basketball, and it seemed to be a pretty good guy too, and it's tragic about his daughter. And like you said, you know – you you got to value the time that you have because you, you just never know when it's done. I mean, this guy's just trying to save time and spend some time with his kids, gets on a helicopter, right. to go from point A to point B, and you know, and all the other people that were there. And it, it's a tragic thing, and I guess that happens in life. But uh, you, you just don't see those type of things coming. But you know, they do. They never stop. And uh, so, you know, best wishes to, to him and his family that remains and the families of all those people. It's just a tragic thing. And, you know, it's you can't put fault anywhere. You can't put blame anywhere. It's just one of those things that, that happens and you just have to process it and, and move on. So we can just be happy that we saw Kobe for those years and uh, that he got to, to live out his life professionally, you know, t to the date uh, the way that he wanted to and went out like a champion and, and was a champion multiple times and, you know, there's not much more to say about it than that. I mean, I guess if you could turn it to, you know, uh, to KG where we're a little more familiar on a day-to-day -day basis with him, uh, yeah, I mean, that would have been devastating to the city. And and uh, so we understand what they're probably feeling in L.A. I mean, he was just uh, huge in that town. And, you know, you just you feel sorry for them and, and with them. And it's a tragic thing. 
Yeah, and the the way it sounds that he had really found, you know, something to keep his mind occupied. Obviously, with athletes, especially star athletes, it's tough to match the buzz you get from playing and dominating. And, and he had just told several friends not long ago that he had really found his inner peace. So. On one hand, you go, man, that's, you know, that's too bad. But in the same breath, hey, man, he did find that inner peace and was happy at the moment. And he had fulfilled a lot of things. And, and, and so he went out happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, age 41 is really young. We know right now how young it feels. If you think about it, sometimes it feels old. Sometimes it feels young. But as far as a lifetime, yeah, man, it's just it is shocking. And, and to all those folks online that – uh want to use this, you know, as their little uh, I'm going to get replies on Twitter. The whole, oh, he shouldn't have been in a helicopter. He should have drove in a, you know, driven in a car. It's like, all right, dude, run the numbers on uh, driving in cars and deaths and come back and, and tell me how that went. But anyway, like I said, rest in peace. Um, Kobe Bryant, no doubt about it. I liked how you put that with Rodgers and, and, and Favre. How you're like, you know, I did what when, when the game was on the line, and then, you know, I'm gonna watch Kobe, I'm gonna watch Favre, I'm gonna watch Rogers, I'm gonna hate him for two, two times a year with Rogers and Favre, but four times in the playoffs with those guys, you know. But um, like you said, ultimately respect, no doubt about it. Um, we'll start on a positive note because we only have one, Aaron. Last seven games, Wiggins, 24 points, five, almost six. Boards almost six assists, shooting 50%, 40% from the three. Whether he's in the long-term plans or he's not, whatever it is, um, he has lifted his stock as a player, whether it's trading or not. Okay, we got that out of the way. That was some positivity. Now, um, this is from Chris Long, KSTP on Twitter. Some of these stats, dude, that loss, 133 to 129, I mean, this is this, this is crazy. This is exactly why we call it living in Loserville for all those folks that want to say, oh, I'm not even going to listen to it because of the name. Oh, no. Um, they led by 27 late in the third quarter. 22 with six minutes left. By the way, there was a lot of three-pointers. They tied the record 41 apiece uh, through three. Uh, I'm sorry, not through three. Three-pointers. Um, 23, we actually set a record. 23 um, threes in a game. 36 points, uh, like I said, seven threes by Wiggins. He was going off. Six threes by Covington. He was going off. The problem is Buddy Heald was going off at the same time <laughs> and uh, just ate our lunch the stat that really stands out is that stat about, you know, I'll let you read it. I'll let you read it. That That's the, the 17 points, 249 left in the fourth quarter since 96-97. Would you like yeah. to read that stat, sir? I, I mean, I don't want to, to but I will. You know, it's – I'll read it, and then I'll go into my thoughts here. It says, since uh, 1996-97 – the first year of play-by-play data, NBA teams entered the day 0-8, uh, 378 when trailing by 17 or more in the final three minutes of the fourth quarter or overtime. So what I'm getting out of that is uh, that was 378 oh. times. <laughs> I couldn't even read it right because of the stat. So, yeah, so that's 1 in 8,378 times that happened. I mean, that's a special thing. I mean, you could put that on a T-shirt. You could uh, market that. I mean, that is that is so rare that it boggles the mind. Uh, I don't – I mean, what do you say? Do you say lack of defense? Well, obviously. Do you say lack of effort? Very possibly. Do you say lack of competitiveness? Very possibly. I mean, what do you say about that? Uh, that – isn't said in those numbers or the score itself or the timing of those of that loss. I mean, you're you're hitting threes from everywhere. You're watching the game thinking, wow, we can't miss. We're up by a huge lead. We're going to coast through this one. You're right, Buddy Hill's kicking it too, but we got a 27-point lead. You know, and, and then it's 
broken down. Okay, we got six minutes. I mean, have you ever seen it? Obviously not, because in 8,378 times, <laughs> uh, that didn't happen. So it was a real special thing, I guess, if you want to put a positive note on. Otherwise, just miserable, man. I mean, what can you what can you say that the numbers don't say, Chris? You know, um, we took the starters out. That's how much we had this thing in the bag, and I wasn't yelling at them to put them back in. You know what I mean? And honestly, it probably wouldn't have mattered down the stretch because once they started hitting them, it was just – I'll give uh, Fox credit for that free throw, quick little bank off. That was dope. I'll give Matt – um Let's talk about Cat for a half a second. What we do know is this never happened when KG was here. We know that, right, because we got 96, 97. So that didn't pro- – I mean, as an 18-year-old kid, did it happen? I don't know. They didn't take the stats. I'm guessing not. Uh, I think that's pretty good odds, wouldn't you say? Um, so it never happened. K- K- that would never happen to KG squad because he would just be like, you know what? I'll go on the court. You guys stay on the sidelines, and I'll get us a couple buckets down the stretch. Go F yourselves. Um, I mean, if this isn't empty minutes, I don't know what is, or empty points, empty minutes, empty – I mean, it just – it's 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 mind-boggling. And, you know, I, I liked how they fought back a couple of games ago. You know, they didn't win the game, but they fought back. I like some of the things throughout the game. I like the team trade. I like certain things. I like where Culver is, but, you know, sure, we were 5 of 12 in the 17 games that Cat missed. We get it. We get that. But we've also lost 10 or 11 with them in the game. So, in a row. Um, we went from Thanksgiving to Christmas. We went to from major holidays without to the next major holiday without a win. Like, it was bad, then it went from worse, then it's just despicable. And I think mentally they're shot right now. You know, I don't think you can say or do much at this point. I think they're shot at this moment with all the yeah. losing, you know? Well, well, to interject, it's like, how do you, after that performance, that one in particular and specifically, you know, how do you go to your locker, take a shower, drive home, and, and sleep? After that, if you're competitive at all, you know, I'm thinking about a kickball game and, and something like that happens. I mean, <laughs> just, how do you wake up the next day? I, I, I mean, just on your point that I think they're shot. I, I think you're right. I mean, how do you, I, I guess, bounce back? I mean, you have to you have a lot of games left. But, you know, are we in take mode, man? I mean, that's one explanation. It's not the only. Uh, but, I mean, it could possibly be. Or, or maybe they got into the mindset of like, well, we're so far ahead, there's just no way we can lose this game. So they just went into coast mode right. and just thought there was absolutely no way. I mean, with zero out of 8,378, uh, you know, but I guess they were due. I, I just don't understand. It's very hard to fathom, uh, a professional franchise with the exception of maybe six to eight years, and I'm going to go low on that, probably six years that is just dealt with and produced the kind of uh, losing, I guess, and apathy that this one has. And I don't blame, you know, you were saying earlier uh, off the air that the chat boards are kind of silent. Well, I, 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 I guess I expect that at this point. I mean, we, they need to come out and tell us what their plan is, and they haven't done that. And until they do that, and we can see logically, or at least find some sort of logic in what's going on right now, I think people are just gonna just put them down and uh, and hope that uh, that they can maybe you know get back on the bandwagon again at some point. But they really need to explain to us what what their logic is, and and, uh, and, and so we can have an understanding of, of, of what the future might hold or could hold, or at least what we're shooting at. Agree? Yeah. I mean, in the off season though, when they made the changes out front and they made it official with Saunders, they did tell us what they're doing. And they did say that it's going to be with some struggle. Like we met, you know, we went off on that three point rant last uh, show and sure enough, they set the record <laughs> for three. So hey, I'll shut up sometimes. But um, I just don't need the squad taking 42 shots from the three point line 
if they're not hitting them during the game. Um, that's great that we want to go into modern basketball the way it's played. That's phenomenal. That's fine. I think that fits Cat. I think that fits Wiggins better, especially if you got shooters because then the floor is more open for Wiggins and all that. And he's playing pretty damn great, I'd say. But, yeah, I just – I don't think it's tank mode because, you know, it's hard to – like I said last week, when – when you miss your star for 17 players, I can't really say tank mode. It's really hard to get a judge on it. But I think that there were some growing pains they expected. Nothing like this, though. Um, and just fitting the pieces together, we knew that they were retooling once they got rid of Jimmy. Um, but a lot of people were like, yeah, man, we just got to get rid of Jimmy. He's number one at fault. And then I just asked, so how's it? How's life without Jimmy? Do you like two years ago? You may have not liked how we played, and it wasn't pretty enough for you, and it wasn't moderate enough for you, but I'll tell you what, before he missed 20-some-odd games, we were third in the West, and we were a hard-nosed team, and Teague definitely fit a lot better into that um, system than he did in this one. Wiggins didn't. Well, why did we give him the extension? Maybe we should have stuck with this. No, I, I'm all over the place. But Jimmy Butler, it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be, obviously. And the, the proof is in the pudding. Look at what Miami's doing right now. Where are they at in the rankings? Yeah, I think Jimmy's a pretty damn good player. Still the second best player to ever put on a Timber in their prime to ever put on a Timberwolves jersey. Sorry if you don't like that. Um, well, I'm on board with you, and I really think that – I mean, well, everything you said makes – Makes great sense, and I guess my I guess where I'm at is in my confusion is you've you, like you said Wiggins is is, is improved uh, his play this season, and uh, yeah, Cat's been out, but Cat's back now. Uh, he's played really well offensively. You have three to four players to to play with, and I'm not going to say it's coaching because I you know it's just Saunders is just getting going here. So what could it be? Why are we losing? And that's a huge question, and we're not going to answer it tonight. But I feel like it has something to do with uh, desire, competition, competitiveness, that kind of thing. Because you have, I think you have enough parts to win 30 games, 35 oh, yeah. games. Easy. Dude, the winning – the A spots not doesn't have a winning record right now and may not. I mean, it'll be like a 500 club that gets in the A spot. Now that Zion's back, though – Hey, you know all those NBA ratings that were horrible? Huh, Zion comes back. It's the second biggest biggest rating of the year. Huh, weird. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, we, we have enough talent to get into the eighth spot. Um, since we made all these the two separate horrible runs losing, we're going to have to pull off six in a row. I know it sounds impossible now, but down the stretch we're going to need some. And, and they're going to make some trades. You know, we, we've been retooling. Um, it's it, where we are contract wise. We know they weren't going to be able to sell the farm because there was we just couldn't do it. Um, I think we're in much better shape at the trade line, trade deadline. Excuse me, and because we were sucked this year. That helps too. But you know, I think next, going into next year, retooling some more. You know, I don't know, man. It's kind of a – I knew this year was going to be a work in progress. I just didn't think it would be uh, this bad, basically. Um, let's keep an eye on them for the next couple of weeks. Let's see what they do or try to do at least at the trade deadline, and then we'll go from there. And We're going to need to close with some positivity this year down the stretch. There's just no way around it. Uh, I couldn't agree more, and I also think that at some point, you know, Culver's going to come into his own, and you have three pieces that are, are substantially really good pieces, and and then you got a Kogi. I mean, you've got the pieces. We need to find out. Uh, I mean, even if we were losing games, Chris, 120, like the old Leola Marymont, you know, no he plays defense, but we, we score the hell out of the ball, I mean, yeah. that's an option as well. But we're not doing that either. So yeah. I, We're not scoring it, the ball at all. We've so been with Cat the last couple of years. We've been in the top ten. We're we're very I mean we're actually mediocre at defense right now but we're horrible on offense. It just it boggles the mind and like I said we need some clarity. You and I were throwing out this, we're throwing out that, but we can't put our finger on what's going on. And 
And uh, we wish we really just want to find some. I mean, you just got to find some footing with this franchise and with this club and with this direction. I think a lot of Timberwolves fans, uh, including myself, are just looking for some, you know, solid ground to stand on and say, yeah, but this, you know, and we don't have the yeah, but this uh, solidly yet. And we have a lot of questions, unanswered questions. We got four legitimate NBA players that I see on this team, and, and he is possibly five or six because you got Covington there. You know, you got you got a nucleus of maybe six, seven players there. So what's going on? I just don't understand. Uh, you know, besides the obvious uh, lack of defense and, and, and some lack of hustle, but like I said, and I, I can't really say anything more than just the fact that and I keep handing you these these uh, brick wall segues, but uh, I mean, you could you could win thirty five games with this squad, and it, that doesn't appear that that's going to happen. Yeah, and um, that's a great way to put it as far as footing. That's what they need right now. The way you put it was great. Also, they need to just get some footing get a win and then go from there and you're not going to be able to do anything. We're not going to be able to really break down too much stuff because it'll be just the same stuff like over and over again um, without getting that first win and then putting three out of five and six out of four and that type of thing. But uh, anything else uh, left on the Minnesota basketball uh, scene there, sir? Uh, No, man. I I think we can wrap the show up. Well, it is a Minnesota show, Living in Loserville. We had the Purple People Eaters edition, which is Vikes Heavy and Gophers at the back end. Now we're in the Timberwolves Gophers, but since it's still Minnesota sports, rest in pre- peace to, to Chris Dolman. There was actually a uh, password that I had to memorize recently. It had a 56 in it. Guess who I chose to remember it by name? Chris Dolman. So rest in peace. Uh, I believe it was a tumor that got him, so rest in peace to him. Uh, on the gopher front, we did get ourselves a nice tight end, a top 20 tight end. Iowa wanted him. Wisconsin wanted him. Our guy Flett got him. So there's some positivity. I found some positivity, Aaron. I found it. Yeah, I mean, that's pos- those are all positive things, and except for the Dolman thing, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, you know, that's when, uh, quickly, just an aside, man, I mean, brought up some names here that, geez, that was when we were just getting into sports, man. Uh, Dolman and Millard and those guys, those yeah. were the earliest Viking teams I remember. And you brought up another name, basketball player, I think, that was uh, part of, like, the first. Was it Willie Burton? Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was, like, the first gopher team that I remember. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of takes us back to to be, to be in our younger years now. And, and we're that's the soul. Is what well, uh, we're appearing trying, here all of a sudden, huh? I'm trying to like uh, you know weasel around that, but yeah, okay. man, it's uh, it's been interesting, man. And yeah, so rest in peace to Chris Dolman, and, and he was a force, man. And oh, him, God. Henry Thomas, and those guys, mm. reckon there's a wrecking crew there, and it was fun to watch those guys. So it was sad to see him go, but uh, you know, sorry for his family as well. All right, we're out of here from the Living and Loser Podcast. Rep- podcast we'll be back in around a week you guys uh try to enjoy some basketball take it easy peace